Hi guys. So <laughs> I'm letting my phone charge because the battery was really low. Um, <clears throat> after I had my seance reading, um, from the amazing Lexi. Um, so if you guys, okay. In my previous video, I talked about, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be looking like I'm facing this way instead of this way because the, the camera thing is over here. It's just really confusing. And if I look at myself, it just looks funky. I'm eating breakfast. Oh, excuse me. So, um, <laughs> um, basically if you don't know about the crow conjuring, I mentioned it yesterday in my video diary. <clears throat> um, it's a subscription based community co subscription based. Like, whew, I was like deep in there. I always carry like Kleenex in my bra. Um, it's a subscription based like community. You, you, you get a, a password to go onto their website. There's free content. There's content you can buy at discounted prices. Um, there's meditations, Reiki healings, this and that. So it's a really fun community to be a part of. And it's only like $13 a month, which is super cheap. Um, and so I really enjoy it. And so I recently resubscribed in time for October. Um, and last year, I in around October time, um, they didn't, they weren't doing the crow conjuring, but Lexi was offering her like mediumship soul, like mediumship soul readings or whatever she was, she was calling it certain a certain thing. And um, so I had purchased one from her, and she video recorded it, so I have that video. And then this one that I purchased, the seance reading was um, a live one, and so <clears throat> we um, had a, agreed on a time, and this morning was the time. Um, and so I had my reading with her, and it was so, so good. Um, so some, some family members, like past loved ones, came through, but um, the main message was really about a lot of other stuff concerning me, concerning the cackling moon, and just concerning the direction that I want to take the cackling moon um, within the next few months, straight into 2020. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. I'm not going to go into full blown detail just yet because I'm not quite ready to get to that point, but I just wanted you guys to be aware of some changes that will be taking place. Um, as I go through my own personal healing. So, um, I had my Bohemian Gothic Tarot with me when she was giving me my reading, <laughs> just in case I felt like I needed to pull cards. So, um, so let's just talk about this. Um, so, so that's what this video is going to be about. And just in case you guys were curious, like what, what is the purpose of this video? I just wanted to share my seance reading. Um, so like I said, spirit came through, my brother came through, um, but I also had some guide messages and it was a lot of past life stuff that came through. <clears throat> there was a lot of things that were validated to me that I had heard of or read about or had a reading of, or just like, there was just like certain, certain things that Lexi would say that I really resonated with because it was just like a key word or just a thought or feeling or an experience that came through that I've had in the past. Um, <laughs> and so just to hear her say it was a validation to me that I was, you know, correct or that a reading that I had in the past from someone else was spot on and things like that. So like when you deal with like past life, impressions or past life readings or memories that come through or or whatever it's always validating to have another reader that's not connected to that original reading um to say something that just rem reminded me of that other session and it was like okay i see it i see i see the message here <laughs> so um basically one thing one major thing that came through in my reading um is the spirit attachment so lexi identified she had she had identified that i have a spirit attachment last year when she did my reading um i at the time that she read for me I, like i said i believe it was like october it was like fall season um last year i believe and um when she read for me I was still living at my parents' house. I was still living here. It's kind of funny how she read for me again this year and I'm back at this house. <laughs> um, 
But um, she, so at the time I was living here because me and my husband were saving up for a house. And so <clears throat> in the reading, she had told me I have a spirit attachment and this and that. And she kind of gave me ideas, little tips and stuff to, you know, to release and go through that whole thing. And she, she had delivered a message to me that it, it was, I knew it was an important message, but it was like not the time for me to deal with it at that moment um, because of my living situation. And as you guys all know, I live a very, a very secret double life kind of a situation. And I have told you guys, I don't know, I mean, this will probably be the first time a lot of you hear it because, um, because I don't know how often you guys watch my channel or how invested in my videos you guys are. <laughs> but in other previous videos, I don't know which ones, I've talked about my double life. I've talked about the reason why I live a double life. Um, I've talked about my depression. I've talked about a lot of different things that are very like, they're as transparent as I want to get with people. Um, but there is still a huge, huge, huge piece of me, of myself, my life, um, that I don't reveal to you guys because <clears throat> I just don't think it's it's the time and place. I just don't think I need to be that transparent, that and all of the above. Um, but <laughs> in my seance reading today, Lexi brought up my spirit attachment again. Um, and I knew she would do it and I had it requested specifically to, to have a reading with about that because I feel like I'm ready to hear it. I'm re ready to hear the message. I was ready to hear what I needed to do to get rid of this spirit attachment. Um, and so basically, as crazy as it sounds, my spirit attachment is actually the persona that I have created for myself the last seven years. So going back to my whole double life situation, seven years ago when I started reading the tarot cards, when I started creating the cackling moon and all of that, um, I was very, very much aware of I didn't want and I wasn't ready to have friends and family in my inner circle, you know, <laughs> to know what I do. Um, mainly because of the dynamics of my family, the dynamics of some of our, my, me and my husband's friends. Um, I just wasn't ready and I'm still not ready. And I don't know if I ever will be ready that will come when it's meant to. But um, I, I feel like because of I was, I'm not ready to be open in that way, I created a whole second version of myself. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I have, you know, my online persona, basically, just like a lot of tarot readers or a lot of like people in general who just have double lives, you have a different identity, you have a different name, you have a different this and that. And that's what I did for Cackling Moon because I was of, of my situation. So, you know, I have a whole other name that I go by. So like I told you guys before, <clears throat> Rose is not my real name. Rose is my reading name. It is my online persona name. It is who I identified with going into this spiritual path. Um, it is a name that flows in my family. Um, it's a name that is heavily, it heavily flows in my, um, in my family dynamic on my mother's side. And so, you know how like a lot of times for males, like you're named after your father, you know, so you, you become a junior and then the third and then the fourth and all of that. So the name Rose is like that in my family, but on my mom's side. So it's like a female version of that. It's really cool. Um, it's just a name that gets carried down through the generations. Um, and so I adopted the name Rose because of one, for that reason, two, because um, it's a connection that I've had with a, my grandmother who I've never met. She passed away before I was born. Um, and I just felt that connection with my grandma. Um, and so I used the name, right? 
So that's where Rose came from. It's, <clears throat> it's just part of who I was becoming, right? Um, and so for seven years, you guys, because I've been doing this for seven years, I've been living my, like, I guess I'll just call it the real life and the mystical life. Like I have two separate lives, right? And, and I, it was, you know, it's easy. It's easy to jump from one to the other, you know, because I've learned to keep them separate. But within the last couple years and very strongly within this year, it's become more of a burden. Um, it's become more something that bothers me and it's, now being validated as a block. And as I say this, I see 1010 10 on the clock behind the camera. So tens is a number of the ending of a cycle. 10 is the end of something because what comes after 10, we rewind back. Well, we don't really rewind, but it's reset um, back at one, which is the beginning of a path. So it's kind of like, I love it that 1010 10 is just like looking right at me. <laughs> As I said this, it's just to me, it's spirit's validation that this is correct. Um, and so I've just been feeling this need to merge the two. And I think I've mentioned it in other videos where it's like, I, you know, I went through a phase where I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep cackling moon. I saw so many readers. There was like a time where there was like two or three tarot readers that I follow. Um, thinky, I don't want to let her outside right now. There was um, like two or three other re readers that were changing from, they were, they were going from not using their, um, Kellyanne Maddox was one of them, that were not using their names of, Kellyanne Maddox used to go by the four queens and then she completely switched her business over to being Kellyanne Maddox. Like she went by her name. Same thing with Carrie Mellon. She used to go by Happy Fish Tarot, if you guys remember her. So um, I was seeing that whole shift happen and that was like four years ago, maybe even more. Um, and I remember I, I used to feel that kind of like that feeling of not jealousy, but more of like envy. But not in a, in a negative sense. It was more like, oh, I wish I could go by my real name. I wish I could go by my identity. I wish I could. Why do I have to be two different people? Um, and I, I used to, it used to bother me because it was just a constant reminder of how I'm not accepted. You know, how my lifestyle is and it wouldn't be accepted in my family, how it wouldn't be understood, how it would be considered wrong or evil or bad or this and that. Um, and so it would, it would hurt me. It would bother me because it was kind of like, here I am as a reader giving messages to my clients of being themselves, being authentic and this and that. And part of me felt like I was being completely authentic, but then there was a, also a part of me that felt like I was lying because I wasn't being true to myself. You know, I was being, I'm being true to you guys as cool, like as transparent as I choose to be, but I would, but really when I think about it. I'm not being true to me because I'm not being, I'm not embracing who I am. And that's the hard part of being in the broom closet, right? That's the hard part of living a double life or like I said, living in the broom closet. There's so many of us who are choosing to hide from family members, our, our spouses or whatever, for whatever reason, right? And, um, and I just, I've been that person too. I've, I've been there, done that, and still doing it um, I, for the last seven years. And it's been really tough. Okay. Go on. Watch. In like five minutes, she's going to want to come back inside. <laughs> okay. So, um, so it's just been like, that's been a thought on my mind. So, Today, to have Lexi bring it up was like, okay, that's like a validation for me that my guide's spirit is saying this is what needs to happen. Um, so Lexi started to talk about my spirit attachment when she mentioned, you know, the spirit attachment is coming in this certain form. I'm not going to explain all of that because I feel like that's too personal. Um, but basically... <laughs> 
it's 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 kind of like I feel like it's like it's kind of like I created my own poltergeist you know um it's kind of like like my like this version of Rose was a was was a piece of me in a past life is the way Lexi said um but it's almost like I fed Rose this power um and now it's more like dominating who I am um and it dominates my emotions it dominates my decisions it dominates my life at times almost like a possession um like a spirit possession um I don't see Rose as a negative um I don't see it as a bad thing I just see it as I'm not, it's, it's like, like a poltergeist, like it's manifesting through my own energy and like I've, I'm feeding it to become stronger and not quite what I had intended for myself. And so seven years is a long time to be living a double life. Seven years is a long time to be suppressing who I really am, my name, um, and my own beliefs for the sake of everybody else or the sake of fear or the sake of all of that, you know, the fear of everybody else finding out what I do or the fear of not being accepted by people or not having like my friends accept me. Cause a lot of my friends in, in real life, they don't, none of them really, <laughs> none of them know what I do. And that's a really lonely feeling because I isolate myself by doing that, you know? Um, and so I, <laughs> so as much as it's like, insane how that came through in the reading today it needed to come out like i needed to hear it oh now you all want to go outside oh my gosh these dogs you guys well maybe it's good maybe i need that little bit of a a break because it was getting kind of heavy the message okay i'm gonna put you all outside dogs you guys like those of you guys who are dog lovers i'm a dog lover too but Sometimes it's like, I miss my cats. I miss the way the cats are just like, don't mess with me, don't bother me, feed me this time and this time and I'm good. <laughs> um, so, so Lexi gave me that message. She, she spread that message to me and I, I had told her, just lay it on me, girl. Like, let me hear it. Because <laughs> I knew I needed to hear it. Um... And so basically she started to give me some advice. The Crow Conjuring has, um, they have a resource in Crow Conjuring where um, if you have a spirit attachment and whatnot and you want, you're ready to let it go, you fill out a form within their website. And they give you kind of like some ideas, tips. Um, you know, there's a reading you can purchase and it's, it's kind of like you're validating that, yes, I have a spirit attachment, and yes, I'm ready to let it go. Um, some people might think it's bullshit. Some of you guys might think it's interesting. Um, but it's really what you take with it, you know? Anyone can think anything that we do. Tarot card readings or spiritual stuff is bullshit. It's just if you truly believe in that stuff and you feel like it's real, then it's going to do you a favor. And if you don't believe in it, but you do it anyway, it's not going to have much of an effect on you, you know? So for me personally, um, I do feel it's real. <laughs> I do. Um, because I it, it's, it validated feelings I already had. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that I feel within me that needs to change. Um, so like... Back in 2017, I was reading tarot cards for a shop. I read, I read for a metaphysical shop. And the owner of the shop, she was like, I looked at her as like a mother figure at that time. Um, and she was very, very real with me and would tell me, you need to let, you need to let go of your fear of not being yourself. Like that's holding you back. And basically Lexi said the same thing to me today that it's holding me back. It's almost like it's it's this wall, it's this barrier that's not allowing me to embrace new things or to be my full potential with Cackling Moon because it's almost like I'm pushing myself, me, back and allowing this like rose image to come through and I'm not 100% authentically me. And so it makes so much sense. 
And it's just been a long, long, long time coming. <laughs> now, the other thing that, that came up for me personally is that um, you guys know that, you know, my life is shifting right now. Um, so my husband is starting his, he started his career this week, was his first week. Um, this is his dream job. Like he's literally living his life purpose right now. And I love to see him bloom <laughs> in his purpose. Um, his life purpose is opening doorways for our marriage. It's going to allow us to be financially stable and just abundant in the finances. Like I'm not, I'm not even afraid and worried about money anymore because I feel like we're just going to be okay. Now, because of that, um, it's allowing some other doors to open for me in the near future of taking the leap from <laughs> leaving my day job and doing Cackling Moon full time, which is, you guys know, if you've been following me since the very beginning, that has always been the one thing I wish I could do. I would love to give readings to people full time, devote everything to Cackling Moon, live completely 100% in my spiritual life. Um, because this is what I love to do that I feel like this is my purpose here on this earth in this present body that I'm in to give readings. So, um, because of that feeling and because I feel that shift coming and I know 2020 is going to be the year that I finally have that dream come true. It's just a matter of when, when I decide to do it, I want to do it authentic I want to be me and I don't want to hide who I am and it's become seven years of suppressing me has turned into literally I feel like I'm split in half and I feel like I have this identity and then I have this identity and they just don't mix and I don't like it. Um, I'm tired of it. <laughs> it's something that has been on my mind and today's reading just completely validated that something needs to change. So I'm going to start making changes as I go through my whole releasing my spirit attachment and releasing my spirit attachment means releasing Rose. Um, and so for those of you guys, if you understand what that means, <laughs> that means I'm going to get rid of Rose, like the identity of Rose, the name Rose has to go. Um, it's funny because I could see how strong and powerful this whole double life has been on me because with hearing Lexi say my real name in the reading tripped me out. Um, it just felt like it wasn't supposed to be said. Like, it feels like a bad word. You know, like, you know, like when you're sitting with your, like, okay, like my family's really conservative. So there is, there's no like fuck shit, motherfucker, bullshit. Like there's no words like that coming out of my mouth when I'm in the presence of my family. Um, we just don't have that kind of relationship and there's, there is a thing as bad words. Now I know some family dynamics, you guys can openly speak how you want and that's cool. But in my family, that stuff is unheard of. So, so I, it really felt, it made my, when, when Lexi was saying my real name, it literally felt like someone was saying a bad word and I didn't like that. You know why? Because it's like my name, my real name should not be. Felt. I shouldn't feel like that's a bad word or a forbidden word coming out of the mouth of somebody that is a spiritual peer, a spiritual friend, um, another reader in my life. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> I, just by hearing her say my name, one, it triggered that feeling, but two, it also made me feel excited because it's like she's probably one of the first people in this spiritual community, the tarot community, who one, knows my real name, and two, who has verbally said it. Um, and so there's a powerful, liberated feeling that comes from that for me. But it's also a very alienated feeling. <laughs> it's uncomfortable for me, and it's seven years of layers that I have to peel off. So, um, eventually, you guys will start to see the changes happen. Um, this is like inner work that has to be done within me first before I can like put it out there. 
Um, I'm not ready to put the name out there. Like I'm eventually, I'm, I'm always gonna be going by the cackling moon, 100%, because that's what everybody knows, right? But I feel like so many of you guys also know me as Rose because that's who I've always gone by. And if you still want to call me Rose, that's fine. Like, I'm not going to tell you you can't or whatever. Because if I, it's a nickname. If you want to call me that as a nickname, that's fine. Rose is a prominent name in my family. It's nothing nor, it's nothing that is not normal, okay? <laughs> there was a reason why I chose that name. So it's, I'm not offended if you still call me Rose or whatever. Like, I'm totally fine with it. But as far as like the future of the cackling moon goes, as far as like the shift of the cackling moon, especially when I do this full time. Um, and like I said, going into 2020, um, I really want to go by and associate my real name, my real identity, who I am with cackling moon. I want to be more authentically myself and I don't want to hide behind another name that isn't mine at birth you know I don't want to hide behind fears like that um definitely it's just going to be the first name I'm not sharing any last names or middle names or anything like that um but it is something that it's something that needs to come out it's something that needs to be more normal for me <laughs> Um, because I want to be myself. I want to be who I am. You know, I don't want to hide behind, um, like a, it's not like it's, I don't see Rose as a fictional character. I just see Rose as an extension of who I am only cloaked with fear. You know what I mean? And so I just want to be me, you know, I want to go by my real name, but also keep the cackling moon. Like I'm not gonna do what the other readers did where they completely stripped you know, their their name from their business and they just went by their for their full name. I'm not gonna do that, I'm not ready. I, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that because of personal reasons, because of like my husband's job and all of that, like we need privacy. Um, but I, I do wanna tear off Rose and go by who I really am, so. You guys will start to see the changes happening. I'm not gonna put it like in your face. It's just gonna be something that will subtly start to take take place. Um, and you'll know it, you'll see it, you'll notice it, I'm sure, if you follow me and all of that. But I just wanted to put this video out there so that you guys are aware that this is happening, you know? <laughs> and I love that it's 2020 that's gonna be coming up in a couple months. I love that it's 2020. Um, two is my favorite number, always has been since I was a little girl. Um, I just feel like 2020 is a powerful number. It's an angel number in itself. Um, it's very resonant with me and my birth date. Um, it's just a powerful number sequence that I feel just kind of goes with this whole shedding the layer, taking off seven years of layers of a person and identity that I have created for myself that I am now ready to let the inner me come out. Um, and it's a beautiful thing and it's an exciting feeling. And I know that my coworkers who watch my YouTube videos, you guys will probably be like, oh my gosh, you're finally gonna do it and this and that. <laughs> because my coworkers know, my, know me obviously by my real name. So for people who know me personally, who've known me by my real name first and then heard of Rose after, <laughs> it's really odd for them to shift to Rose because they see me as my real name. And so I, it's for them, it's kind of like they just go by my real name, which is fine. I like, I prefer it. Um, but there's a whole group of you guys who only know me as Rose. And so when we shift into me being more me and going by my real name, it's going to be hard for you guys. It's going to be fucking hard for me, <laughs> but it's going to be difficult. It's going to probably be a little odd, awkward for you guys too. Um, which is why I don't expect you all to shift right away. <laughs> And I certainly will not be offended if you call me Rose for whatever, for like, I, I won't be offended by it because it's, it's, 
it's not a bad thing. It's just the energy behind the reason why I used a different name is turning into an energy that I need to just detach from. So I hope that this makes sense, you guys. Thank you for being patient and listening. And if you watched this entire video, thank you. I really appreciate it. I want to pull a card from the Bohemian Gothic Tarot, the silver edition. Um, I just feel like I want to pull a card for the energy of this whole thing that I just talked about. So let's see what comes through. Ooh, the King of Pentacles came out. So the King of Pentacles, the Pentacle suit is the body. It is the, the material things. And so it's true. That's the physical, the physicality of it. Um, it's earth-based. It's kind of like, you know, rising from the dead. <laughs> the way I see this card, isn't that creepy? Um, so... <coughs> I feel like the King of Pentacles is kind of saying like, it's time to take off layers. It's time to embrace the King vibration. The King in the tarot is the top of, you know, the whole sequence of court cards. So to me, it's just kind of like, it's time to embrace who I am. I've do, been doing this for enough years to say I have experience under my belt. I've been doing this so many for so long that it's like, I, I kind of owe it to myself to do this for me, I do so many, and, and Lexi said it too in the reading, she says, you hold so much space for everybody else, but you rarely do stuff for yourself. And it's so true. So this is something that I'm definitely doing for me. And two of, <laughs> two of pentacles, two of wands came out. Two, 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 remember? And then we have dance macabre. Dance macabre. Dance macabre, macabre, macabre. <laughs> Oh my God. So anyways, oh my gosh, this deck is so crazy because when you look at it from one angle, it looks one way. And when you look at it at a different angle, it looks a different way. Like it's just so gorgeous. Yes, yes, I'll let you in right now. These dogs drive me crazy. Look at that, creepy. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, so I'm excited, I'm pumped, I'm ready for this. I'm ready to, to release my uh, spirit attachment. So I'm gonna be going through that process. In the next couple months, I feel like just 2019, I'm just on the verge of stripping these layers. And I really feel like 2020 is just going to be the year I do me. The year that my real name comes out. The year that I embrace me. And, and my real name is no longer going to feel like a bad word. It's going to just be me. So I'm excited. I can't wait to see what happens. Probably a lot of emotions will be coming out of me throughout the process, but it's necessary. So anyways, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and go let the animals back in. <laughs> I'm gonna um, be doing readings later on this afternoon. I have a, there's a crystal shop that I wanna go visit. I'll probably leave soon to go because I think they open up at 11. Um, because Lexi mentioned utilizing rose quartz and I only have one piece of rose quartz that's a, a it's a wand but I don't I want a big like a chunky palm stone rose quartz because those are just easier for me to carry so I'm gonna look at, look and see if I could find one um and then it's just the excuse to go to a crystal shop so because <laughs> I need to get out of this house and get away from the dogs for a little bit um and then hubby oh. might come visit tonight because I think he gets off work at three so he said that he'll feed the cats and this and that, and then he'll probably come down and spend the night here with me and then <clears throat> drive back up tomorrow morning so he can go to work um, in the afternoon. So I'm excited to see him because I miss him. And yeah, so have a beautiful day, you guys. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or anything regarding anything I talked about, please leave it below. And other than that, I will talk to you guys later. Bye, loves.